Coming up on this week's edition of the Met Report, our Roadrunner softball team has their sights set on bringing home a national championship. We'll bring you all the exciting NCAA action. Comic-Con returns to the Mile High City and it's bigger than ever. The Met Report web slings into downtown Denver and we'll show you just how big it got. And do you have World Cup fever? If so, you are not the only one here on campus. Find out where to watch every single spectacular save and thrilling goal from Brazil. Welcome to the summer edition of the Met Report. I'm Megan Connor. And I'm Rachel Branda. We begin this edition of the Met Report with a developing story. A shooting that injured three people in the parking lot of Red Rocks after the concert. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says the shooter opened fire on a white SUV that sped away. Three people were taken to the hospital with injuries that are not believed to be life-threatening. Police are still searching for the shooter and only have a vague description to work with. The Thursday night concert featured Nas, Schoolboy Q, and Lotus. We will bring you more information as it becomes available. If you've been to the Student Success Building, you may have noticed a slight change in appearance. The sign that formerly said Metro State was changed to the more official MSU Denver title. Senate Bill 12148 was signed in April of 2012, approving the official name change of the university. Changing the sign on the Student Success Building is just one of the many changes occurring around the Auraria campus. Looking for something energizing to do between classes? This summer, soccer fans on campus have a place to unleash their passion and celebrate each goal of their favorite team. We ask students their thoughts about the World Cup. Um, this is my first time really just getting deep into it, um, just watching it as much as I can. Um, I have like the app on my phone and everything like that, always checking up with the scores. I love it. Every four years is like the greatest time. I mean, I can't get enough of it. And their thoughts about Team USA. Uh, USA got a lot of heart. Everyone's doubting them. Everyone in the world thinks like USA soccer, which, you know, it's not as engaging, but, you know, they're getting up there. USA all the way. It was unbelievable. I'd honestly lost a lot of hope towards the end of that game. And when that ball went in the net, I just lost my mind. I think it was definitely... Um, a really high moment for them, especially getting themselves into, you know, a game like that off the bat too, but they, they pulled through. What do you think about these activities here? I think it's great. It's a tremendous opportunity for the students to come between classes or just wait and watch some soccer. I think it's fantastic. Well, I think this is a, you know, a wonderful uh, little thing that we have for the students here on campus. You know, we get a projector going, you know, and uh, we have fast Wi-Fi here, so you guys get to watch the, uh, the game, you know, for free, and, you know, you can enjoy it with us. The World Cup viewing party takes place every weekday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. throughout July 13 at the Tivoli Pool Hall. For the Matt Report, Janis Carrasquel. Team USA's next game is on June 22nd against Portugal. That will be a tough game, especially if Cristiano Ronaldo will be playing. There is still time to register for classes for the upcoming fall semester. Students are urged to take care of any holds on their accounts immediately to make the registration process easier. If students wait much longer, classes may be canceled because of low enrollment. The registration deadline for the fall semester is August 4th. Looking to enjoy some unique art close to campus? Tonight, students can join MSU alumni for a stimulating night of art, all made out of paper. The Center for Visual Arts on campus is sponsoring a paper work opening reception. It features artists such as Don McFadden, Jennifer Gormley, Bovie Lee, and assistant professor at MSU Denver, Ann Hallam. The reception runs tonight from 6 to 8 at the Center for Visual Arts, which is located on Santa Fe Drive. Rita and Naveen Diamond, CEOs of Stone Ridge's companies, generously donate to MSU Denver's hotel management program. Josh Kozart tells us more. Metro's hospitality department jumps for joy after receiving the largest donation this campus has ever seen. May 20th marked the day Rita and Naveen Diamond donated $1.5 million to MSU's hotel management program. 
Diamond is the president and CEO of Stonebridge Companies and says that they both have a long-standing interest in supporting education. To me, it's all about education. Um, education should be available to everybody. Education will make this world better. I need to be interested in you, and I need to be interested in 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds. Uh, they could be my next cardiologist. They could be you know, the next hotel manager. They could be whatever. Somebody did it before us. I think it's my turn to do it uh, and play important. President Jordan says that the Diamonds set a good example for MSU students, showing students they too can achieve great things. I'm Josh Kozart for the Met Report. All current and future educators are invited to join the Critical Educators Reading Series held here on campus June 25th. This is an informal book group sponsored by MSU that will be reading and discussing Myth of the Normal Curve by Kurt Dudley Marling and Alex Gern. The group meets from 5 to 7 p.m. this Wednesday at Sook's Coffee Shop in Northwest Denver. For more information on this event, visit MSU Denver website. The Cimarron Cafe and Grill located in the Tivoli has closed. Students will no longer be able to get food and beverages at this convenient cafe. Rumors are floating around as to what will take the cafe's place. The Tivoli is keeping any future plans under wraps, and so far, the only consistent word we've heard is brewery. Only time will tell what the Tivoli has in store. The Met Report will keep you up to date on this developing story. So, I was really upset when I first heard about this. I loved eating at the Samaran Cafe. I've never eaten there. I heard that their food is pretty good, but oh. that'll be exciting if they have a brewery and I don't know, maybe they should put like a frozen yogurt place in there or something. That would be, That'd be good. Awesome. Coming up after the break, we'll show you what expecting what exciting things went on at Denver Comic Con this year. And coming up later in sports, I'll tell you about two former Metro State Guards who are getting back on the court in a big way. We'll be right back. The Met Report is brought to you today in part by Health Center at Auraria, a proud sponsor of the Healthy Pursuits program. Healthy Pursuits brings Zumba, belly dancing, Nia, Pilates, and yoga classes to Auraria for free as part of tuition and fees. Classes are offered Monday through Friday, and you can find the full schedule on the Wellness Channel in Connect You or on the Health Center website at tinyurl.com slash healthypursuits. Also, real-time updates are on Twitter at BeWellAuraria, and news and events are on Facebook at Health Center at Auraria. Welcome back. A positive outlook can make all the difference when a major life change occurs. Colorado's beloved Amy Van Dyken Ruin was injured June 6th when the ATV she was driving hit a curb and sent her hurtling off a drop-off in Arizona. The six-time Olympic gold medalist severed her T11 vertebra and it has been confirmed that she is paralyzed. Though this will be an extreme life change for the 41-year-old, she is keeping a positive attitude and also keeping fans updated through social media. Van Dyken Ruin was transferred to Craig Rehabilitation Hospital in Englewood, Colorado on Wednesday. Biking to work is a popular activity here in the Mile High, and this Wednesday is Colorado's Bike to Work Day. If you participate, you can start the day off energized and refreshed, save money on gas, avoid traffic delays, and improve air quality by reducing congestion on the roads. You might even win one of the awesome prizes up for grabs. For registration and more information on the Bike to Work Day, visit biketowork2014.org. 
In 2007, the Federation International Football Association, otherwise known as FIFA, chose the country of Brazil to host the 2014 World Cup. Brazil, one of the most soccer-loving countries in the world, is heavily protesting against the 2014 World Cup tournament. Violent riots against FIFA and the government have surfaced, and the people of Brazil are angry. The tournament costs nearly $15 billion to develop, even though the country faces poverty and many other social problems. The current anti-government protests are garnering attention and causing a need for the government to respond. So far, police are using tear gas to disperse a large crowd on the streets in hopes to end the violence. Denver is still running to host the 2016 Republic National Convention. GOP leaders have not yet chosen the official location, but are expected to settle on a host city in late summer or fall. Other cities being considered include Dallas, Cleveland, and Kansas City, Missouri. If Denver is elected as the RNC host city, the convention will take place at the Pepsi Center. High water levels make trips difficult for rafters this summer. Due to a heavy snow melt and several weeks of rain, Colorado rivers flow strong this summer. May and June already saw several fatalities as people were swept away in these fast-moving currents. Though these fatalities were not all rafting related, concerned raft guides have adjusted their levels of difficulty based on high water levels and keep extra rescuers on hand. The water is me measured in cubic feet per second and has surpassed regular safety levels. However, rafting companies press on and try to warn rafters not to go past their level of experience. Amazon has now entered the phone industry. The company has introduced a new Fire Phone that will let users talk, take high quality photos, and sell products online. But the best part? The device has four front facing cameras and a unique 3D screen. The Amazon Fire Phone also introduces a new Firefly feature that allows the phone to recognize over 100 million items with its camera and microphone. It is estimated that Amazon will sell 2.7 million of these phones, reaching its bottom line of $2 billion in sales. The Fire Phone will be available from Amazon and AT&T starting July 25th. Denver Comic Con is a part of Comic Book Classroom a Colorado-based nonprofit organization fighting for literacy and the arts. The Met Report was not only at the convention, but on the search for real-life comic characters. Yeah! 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 Fanboys and fangirls, did you miss out on the 2014 Denver Comic Con? If so, don't fret. The Met Report has you covered doing this and seeing the smiles on the kids' faces and all that stuff. It's so awesome to see. This three exciting day pop culture event featured collectibles, gaming, cosplay, and plenty of family fun. I love to be Maleficent because it makes everybody happy. <laughs> this year we're actually here representing the Cons charity, Comic Book Classroom, and that to us is just phenomenal. We're, you know, out here and trying to help all of our local things, our local con. Thousands flooded the convention center, 86,500 to be exact. With this being the third highest attended Comic Con in the nation, the Mile High City is quickly becoming a top site for all things fandom. For the Met Report, Cynthia Maldonado. Do you work at Starbucks? If so, you will soon be eligible for free college education through Arizona State University online programs. This new initiative is touted as one of the first of its kind. It will allow over 135,000 Starbucks employees to graduate debt-free from ASU with no requirement to repay or stay with the company. The program is funded by both ASU and Starbucks and starts this fall. The Denver skyline will soon change. Heinz, an international real estate company, is designing a new 600,000 square foot tower in downtown. The new building will be on 15th Street between Arapahoe and Lawrence. The 590 foot tall building will be the biggest office tower constructed in downtown Denver since 1985 and will be the 10th largest in the city. The new building is expected to be completed by 2017. Well, the Front Range is well known for its afternoon summer thunderstorms that produce heavy rain, wind and lots of lightning. Many Coloradoans may find themselves stuck out in the middle of a severe lightning storm. Here's how you can protect yourself against nature's fury. Lightning.
Mother Nature's very own fireworks show lights up Colorado skies as severe storms roll over the Rockies. But with this beautiful light show comes extreme danger. So the best thing you can do is to find shelter in a place that has a, a grounding, so like a building that has plumbing in it. Um, it's a really bad idea to go to like a park pavilion to, that isn't grounded. Um, and the second best place to be is in your car, which is actually a pretty safe place to go. Colorado ranks 10th in the country for the most dangerous state in the U.S. with lightning strikes. Colorado alone sees around 500,000 strikes a year. Coloradoans can't control where this lightning may strike, but can prepare themselves for the storm. In Colorado, you're more likely to find yourself in kind of an open field situation or at the top of a mountain, maybe above timberline where you are the highest thing around. I think it's important for people who are, maybe you're at a baseball game or an outdoor wedding and you notice that there's lightning around. I think it's important to be that awkward person that says, we need to cut this a little short and go sit in our cars for a little bit and wait for the risk to go by. Before you make your next outdoor adventure, make sure to keep an eye on the sky and check the forecast. For the Met Report, I'm Josh Kozart. I love lightning, but I definitely would not want to be stuck outside during a mm -hmm. thunderstorm. I love looking at footage and pictures of lightning, like some of the pictures that we saw in that package. Yeah, and that wedding, oh my gosh, I, I hope my wedding does not fall uh, during probably a thunderstorm. Cry. <laughs> well, now that we know how dangerous lightning is, here is Josh Kozart giving our weather update. Should we worry about lightning this week? Should we try and stay inside? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Megan, today we do have a small chance for a few small thunderstorms to build over the Continental Divide and Colorado foothills today. Um, it's pretty much just going to stay in the mountains, but if you do take a look to the west, you might see a bolt or two. Um, so some pretty exciting stuff, but again, stay safe. And Rachel, I think you'll like this. Today is the last day of spring. Tomorrow, early, early morning, we are going to start the official start of summer. And speaking of summer, we're already starting to see temperatures out there. Right now, we sit at 82 degrees on June 20th, so already starting to really get things going with the temperature. Our high today expected to be about 86 degrees. Even our lows are really starting to get up there as well with a low of 61. And then we got winds out of the east northeast at about six miles per hour. So nothing too terrible. And then we got sunshine all across the great state of Colorado. Let's take a look at our hour by hour for today. Two o'clock, we're going to see 85 degrees. And then three o'clock starts the 86s. And that's going to continue till about five, 530 or so. And then we're going to slowly start to drop off at 85 at around six o'clock, but not too terrible of an afternoon for us today. For those of you who suffer from pollen, Today, we're going to see trees and grass be high for us. And weeds are slowly catching up and they're going to be here at low. Um, we're expecting to see these start to rise up with all the rain that we've seen. So if you are an allergy sufferer, make sure you grab the nasal spray and eye drops. Let's now take a look at what tomorrow's weather is going to look like. June 21st, we're going to see 90 degrees, so a great way to start off our uh, first day of summer. And then we're going to see winds just out of the northeast at about 8 miles per hour, so not too terrible. And they're low at about 60 degrees. And tomorrow afternoon, here in the metro area, we have a better chance than today, about 30% chance for some of those storms to build over the continental divide and then kind of roll on out to the front range. And there's going to be isolated here and there. I'm not expecting to see anything too severe, possibly lightning, uh, damaging wind, and maybe pea-sized hail, but nothing that we can't handle, and especially stuff that we have not seen yet this season, that's for sure. All right, let's now take a look at our national map. We got the stationary front sitting right over the middle of the country, and it's not going to be moving very much, not going to change our temperatures at all. But we are going to see a lot of rain produced with this. In places like Iowa, they've already seen quite a bit of rain this season, and a lot of their rivers are actually at flood stage right now, so they really don't need any more of it. And our greatest threat for severe weather for our Saturday is going to be down in the southern part of Colorado in through Kansas, Nebraska, and Iowa. That's where we could possibly see the large hail, damaging winds, lightning, and possibly even a tornado or two. So if you're headed out that way, keep an eye on it. As for our side of the country, we got this two low pressure systems just sitting to our west of us, and they are going to have some pretty weak cold fronts that are going to slowly start to drift their way down to the Denver area. That's what's going to start to fuel some of those uh, non-severe thunderstorms over the Continental Divide for our Saturday and then move on out onto the plains. And then that's what's also going to create as they push on out to the east some of those severe weather in Kansas. Let's take a look at Sunday now. That stationary front that was over here to the east, 
just going to dissolve away. We're just going to see a few spice showers here and there. We do need to keep our eye on a few of them because they could become supercell storms, but nothing drenching or a washout by any means. And then out to the west, those two cold fronts are kind of going to collide a little bit, create a stationary front, not going to be moving very much. We will see a slight temperature change, which I'll get to in just a moment. But for us, this is what's going to give us that 40% chance for some precipitation. Again, the lightning and hail and so on for our Sunday, Sunday excuse me, afternoon. Let's now take a look at a closer look at Colorado. For Denver, we're going to see our temperature at 90 degrees for our first day of summer, DIA at 88, 87 degrees down Boulder. And if you're head down to the springs, you're going to see 86 degrees. And take a look at Lamar, 99 degrees. Great pool weather for you out there. If you're headed out to the West Grand Junction at 93, going to send a nice cool compared to the 99, 79 degrees for Gunnison. Let's now take a look at Sunday. Denver, better chance for some storms with a eight high, excuse me, 83 is our high. DIA 81, Boulder 80, Springs 83, Lamar just a smidge cooler at 93 degrees, but not too terrible. Grand Junction, you're going to see yourself at 92, and Durango, you're going to be at 85. Let's now take a look at our five-day forecast. Monday, we're going to see our temperatures a bit cooler because of that cold front that's going to push through Sunday at 76 degrees. And Tuesday, we're also going to see a good chance for some isolated thunderstorms as well. Wednesday, we're going to start a warming trend at about 87. And then Thursday and Friday, we are back in to the 90s with plenty of sunshine. So a great way to start off our first week of summer. Um, just a few storms here and there, not going to be a big deal, so we can most definitely get out and enjoy that. Yay. I love these warm temperatures. It's felt like summer already. So oh, I know. It's going to be a warm one, I think. And it catches a lot of people by surprise because they see that, oh, you know, tomorrow's the first official day of summer, and they're like, well, it's been 90 yeah. already. It's like, wait, and, hasn't this already right. happened? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, so. it'll be nice. I feel like I've been in hibernation since, <laughs> since Almost the winter. Definitely. It was such a cold winter. So. Yeah, get outside and enjoy it. All right, well, coming up next, we have entertainment. We'll be right back. Now and then I get insecure from all the pain I'm so ashamed I am beautiful no matter what they say Words can bring me down Where I bring Hollywood a mile high Aligning the Hollywood stars over Denver I'm here to bring you the latest juicy gossip from the mile high to the streets of Hollywood. Give your most handsome look to that camera. Or I'll be bringing you the latest gossip from Tinseltown all the way up to a mile high. I didn't get any injuries. <laughs> you were okay. I was okay. You were I was a little dancing. Yeah. You know. Check us out every Friday live at 12.30 p.m. on The Merit Report. Now joining us for Entertain Met is Melanie Towson. How has your summer been, Melanie? Hey, thanks for asking, Rachel. It has been great. It's about to get even better now that all these great festivities are hitting the Denver scene. One event in particular should have GLBT supporters pulling out their calendars and circling these dates. Denver Pride Fest 2014 is back and kicking off on June 21st and 22nd. The Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Community Center of Colorado is putting together another merry celebration of parades, dancing, art, drinks, and good food for those who want to attend. Denver's Pride Fest has become one of the largest and most sought-after occasions in the U.S. that supports open views on sexuality and same-sex partnerships. For those looking to attend or hope to participate in Pride Fest, visit the GLBT Student Services at Araris office located in Tivoli 213 or visit glbtcolorado.org to get the scoop. If you're looking to chase away those summer blues and want to liven up your vacay, then I've got three summer fun tips that won't even cost you a dime. Tip number one, don't hesitate to gravitate outside. Explore the beauty that Colorado has to offer by visiting the Garden of the Gods or head over down to Dinosaur Ridge. Two, there's nothing like that big buzz of the city. So take a trip downtown for free events like Pride Fest or Southwest Movies at Skyline Park. And three, Red Rocks Amphitheater and Park not only has hiking and biking trails for the public, but you can also mosey on over to the awesome Performers Hall of Fame Center for no charge at all. Telluride's Bluegrass Festival kicks off its 40th anniversary today and all throughout the weekend, featuring artists such as Brandi Carley, Jason Isbell, Ray LaMontagne, and many more. 
Hip-hop and DJ extraordinaire Skrillex will be killing it at Red Rocks Amphitheater as well this weekend, along with Pusha T and Milo and Otis. Last but not least, Westward Music Showcase will be getting down tomorrow with 140 local artists along with famous out-of-towners such as Diplo and 2 Chains on 16 different stages. Well, these concerts are definitely must-sees. Speaking of must-sees, I suddenly have a craving for some popcorn and a good flick. Let's see what awesome movies are coming to theaters this week. Oh my gosh, did you see that? You gotta check it out. I wanna see that. That's so cool, I can't wait. We have to go and check that out. Let's see. You want to hear the real story? I'm the one you want to talk to, Tommy DeVito. If it wasn't for me, we all would have wound up with a bullet in our head. Friends like that, you should change your name to Sinatra. I'm going to be as big as Sinatra. I would love to introduce you to a new discovery of mine, Frankie Valli. Dream of wild, I heard them all, but I never heard a voice like Frankie Valli's. I know I need to write for this voice. The boys are back in town. Director Clint Eastwood wows audiences again in his adaptation of the legendary Broadway musical that is now making its way onto the big screen. The biopic tells the story of four Jersey boys brought up on the wrong side of the tracks and in time joined together to create the most iconic 1960s rock group known as the Four Seasons. Experience the music, the laughs, and the struggle of a young group's claim to fame. Don't miss this movie in a theater near you. Girl, I must admit, I something strange in my mind. That Lambo okay right there, right? It's my car. We've tried, but audiences just can't seem to get enough of funny man Kevin Hart. He, along with Gabrielle Union, Michael Ely, and Megan Good return after the very successful Think Like a Man rom-com in an all-new sequel, Think Like a Man 2. What's different this time? Well, there's been a slight change in scenery. All the couples head to Sin City for some much-needed celebrating for a wedding that may just go down in flames. You never can tell with this crazy cast. Are we in here right now? Let me do all the talking. No, no, no. Because I'm a season one holder of eyes. Have you seen it? No. Exactly, so you won't have the knowledge. Everybody listen up! Well, guys, I don't know about you. I'm going to go see Jersey Boys. I just, it looks great. I love that era. I love that kind of music. It looks awesome. Clint Eastwood, too. You can't. I know. can't not see a Clint Eastwood movie. Yeah, I think Like a Man 2 looks good too. Kevin Hart's pretty funny. I like that Think Like a Man when it looks like it's going to be pretty funny. Yeah, that looks good. All right, guys, thank you for joining us for EMET. I'm Ellen Townsend. Sport is coming up after the break. All night long and do it all again so I can find my way back home. The sun seems to shine a little less since you've been gone. You were the one I wanted. Don't stray. Don't ever go away. I'll just smile and everyone will want to go with it. Oh. Joining us now from Met Report Sports is Anthony Rodriguez. The softball team did well last season, Anthony, but how did they do in last month's NCAA tournament? We'll get to softball soon, but first, former Metro State guard Brandon Jefferson held two workouts with the Denver Nuggets last week in preparation for the 2014 NBA draft. That's right, Jefferson, the 2014 RMAC and NCAA Division II Player of the Year, worked out alongside Arizona's Nick Johnson, Central Florida's Isaiah Sykes, and a few others in front of Nuggets head coach Brian Shaw and President Josh Kroenke. He is believed to be the first runner, road runner to have an NBA pre-draft workout since Sean Tillman and Gene Edwards were both invited by the Nuggets.
Nuggets in 1990. Denver holds the number 11 overall pick and second round selections at number 41 and number 56. Metro State currently has nine former players playing professionally overseas, so we wish Brandon Jefferson the best of luck. Cross country and track athletes Kirk Harvey and Brianna Hemming were both named Capital One First Team Academic All District last month. Hemming earned All America honors last month in the women's 1500 meters on the final day of the Division II Track and Field Championships in Allendale, Michigan. Harvey joined Hemming as the school's second All American last season after Harvey finished fifth in the 3000 meter steeplechase. Both athletes are now eligible for Capital One Academic All America honors. The Roadrunners cross country and track squad finished top 15 in program of the year. The men's team was 14th and the women were 12th. Neither team had finished in the top 15 previously. After finishing last in the RMAC last season, the softball squad made it back to the NCAA tournament last month after making their way out of the RMAC basin. They would take on Texas Women's University in game one of the tournament. We pick up things in the first inning and it wouldn't take long for the offense to get rolling as senior Danny Sandell would take this pitch from Lander to left field to make it 1-0 Roadrunners. Go to the fifth inning, Roadrunners and Pioneers tied 3-3, but not for long as Kelsey Tillery blasts this two-run jack to left field to make it 5-3 Roadrunners. Still in the fifth inning, after a Mary Towner single, Kaylin Harmon would get in on the action with this two-run jack of her own to make it 7-3 Metro. Next up to bat is Aubrey Mall into the center field variety. She extends the fifth inning even further with this solo shot to put the Roadrunners up 8-3. Fast forward to the seventh inning with the Roadrunners in control. Tillery wasn't done for the evening as she would bid adios to this ball for her second home run of the game to make it 9-4 Metro State. The five home runs would be all that the Roadrunners would need over Texas women's for the hot start in the NCAA tournament. Oh, it's awesome, um, you know, to be back here again. It's a great feeling, and, you know, I think after this in, this win, we can just kind of breathe a little bit and know that we can compete with anybody out here. I truly believe if, if we just come out and kind of play the way we ended that last half of the game, um, we can play with anybody, and it's just about carrying ourselves the right way and um, not giving up the big innings, which, which we, were, we did do a nice job of that. However, the Roadrunner season came to an end on the second day of the NCAA tournament. After suffering a 13-5 loss in Game 2 of the tournament to West Texas A&M, the Roadrunners were eliminated after an 11-3 loss to hot-hitting Midwestern State of Texas in five innings in Canyon, Texas. Metro finished the year with a 33-17 record and says goodbye to three seniors in Kelsey Tillery, Danny Sandell, and Aubrey Mall. You may have still seen him on the court, excuse me, on the bench last season as a part-time assistant coach, but another former Metro State men's basketball guard, Demetrius Miller, is getting back on the court. Meech was added to the USA men's basketball three-on-three -three world championship team late last month. He competed at the FIBA World Championships in Moscow, Russia earlier this month. Miller played his final two years of collegiate basketball with the Roadrunners, leading the team to the NCAA Division II Regional Championships in 2012 and 2013. Unfortunately, Meech and Team USA were knocked out in the round of 16. Qatar went on to win the gold, Serbia got the silver, and Russia beat out Lithuania for the bronze. However, Miller did go on to get the bronze in the slam dunk competition where he was absolutely throwing it down, so at least he came home with some hardware. So how cool is it that two former Metro State guards, one playing for Team USA and Demetrius Miller, and now Jefferson working out for the Nuggets twice. Pretty cool. Oh my gosh, Pretty that's amazing. Awesome. BJ deserves it too. He's an mm -hmm. amazing player. Absolutely. Now he's probably not going to get drafted most likely, but a summer league invite is going to be awesome because then all the NBA executives will be able to see him on display and then you never know, maybe D League and then up to the NBA, you never know. Be as long cool. as you get a shot. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's exciting that the, the Team USA and the Nuggets are going to have and on a good note. So before we finish the show, let's check out our trending and funny video of the week. First thing first, I'm the rounded. rounded. They don't ask, but the whole world feel it. They don't feel it. And I pee every 10 seconds. I cannot bend down. That would defy the laws of physics. Right, right. Cup of juice, open oh, beer, make it deep cat. Uh -huh. Taking prenatal straight, never chase that. Never put frozen on, wear my nap bag. Uh -huh. As a reflux. So, guys, this video is created I'm called so pregnant, pregnant Moms. There's a group of mothers out there who have their I'm own YouTube the channel called bus. What's Up Moms. Their videos are self-produced, hilarious, and pretty much about anything from what to cook up for dinner, pumping milk, to outdoor activities for children. I said, baby, don't kick me. I might just go pee-pee. I can't stand no waiting. 
I just want some sushi. Better show up on tabs, we too much money online. I'm straight up in there so much, ought to give me a job, you put time. Now tell me who that, who that. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I'm so pregnant, I can't even see my toes. Brilliant, I love it. That's like so creative for them to do. Well, they can rap pretty good, but Megan, I think you should leave the singing to the professionals. Yeah. At least Megan's better than Iggy Azalea, though. Right? She's better than Iggy for sure. Well, that does it for the June edition of the Met Report. For Rachel Branda, Josh Cozart, Melanie Townsend, and Anthony Rodriguez, I'm Megan Connor. Don't forget to check us out at metreport.org and also on our YouTube channel. And coming in July, look for our Spanish show, El Noticiero Metro, on the air live right before the Met Report. Don't miss it.